it rained all day yesterday not as heavily and not as much as we needed but we'll take it gonna go and have a look at the fountain and see if it's doing a bit better been very low lately yeah hopefully this day of rain will have made a little bit of a difference Una <whistles> Una she's gone the wrong way we never normally go this way <laughs> come on this way <laughs> sun's come out now and it's actually quite hot. I don't know if I've got Santi's head protected enough. Are you protected under there? As you might know from our last video, we're doing a bit of a rethink of our garden. So I am dismantling the beds, the stone beds that we've got, and I am reusing the stones to border some trees in the back part of the garden, which is more like, calling it like a bit of an orchard type area. I think it looks really nice with the uh, stones around them and it helps us keep the mulch in. Uh, whew, hard work though. <laughs> Being able to wear Santi on my back now that he's a bit bigger has opened up a few more options for things I can do while I'm carrying him. So this is the kind of thing we get up to sometimes while he's napping. As long as I keep moving, it's amazing what he sleeps through. There was plenty of clattering of stones into the wheelbarrow this morning and a fair bit of grunting from me too, I imagine, but he slept through it all. Not quite sure how this is going to work when it's sunnier and hotter because it was quite a cool morning and we were both sweating by the time we'd finished but at least for these spring mornings when it's a bit cooler we have something useful we can do outside. So Mauro only works until 2pm these days, which is really great. We do definitely notice the difference in terms of the money coming in, but we feel like it's really, really worth it. To be honest, you probably wouldn't have chosen to make this change without the support of all of you watching our videos, supporting us with all your comments, or supporting us over on Patreon. Um, it does make a difference and we are so grateful for that. So it's just the morning, so I need to fill on my own with Santi, so if it's too hot or we're inside, maybe during that time I will try and plan future projects, order things that we need online, research things that I need ideas about, or maybe just try and do some editing of these videos in the spare moments that I get. Pretty much all of our naps are contact naps, so we do a lot of that as well, and it's always a good day if we have some kind of appointment or chore to do outside the house to give us something interesting to do. Processing food is always a good option too, and I'll also try and get lunch ready, try and get a head start on anything I can prep in advance for dinner, and then Mauro finishes work at 2 so we can have lunch together. Did you know you've been back at work for a month now, exactly? Wow, doesn't feel like it. <laughs> How does it feel? It does feel like more actually. <laughs> what do you mean? No, 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 it hasn't been a month. It's been like a month, almost a month and a half. Oh yeah. Because it started mid, mid of February. It's been more like six weeks. Yeah, that's true. How's the part-time life going? Part-time is great, actually, because I feel like I finish the day before I get bored or tired. So I'm always like finished kind of wanting more, which is always a, a good, like I'm always running out of time, but that's okay because the next morning I know exactly what to do. Um, and then I get to spend the whole afternoon with Santi, so it's actually uh, amazing to be able to work part time. <laughs> so what do you what does what do you do straight after finishing work? Um, I usually do chores like the donkey, which I haven't done yet. Um, sometimes Harry does it for me, and uh, and then I have lunch, and then I just nap with Santi. So we've got someone saying today on this 
sofa bed and uh, <laughs> not gonna lie, I'm a tiny bit nervous about someone sleeping underneath these shelves that I put up. If you're interested, it's 75% hydration. <laughs> That's a lot of salt. How much salt is 30. that? And it was like so much. Estoy intentando saber el ingrediente secreto, pero no. Me gusta mucho el ingrediente secreto. No, no, pero no sé, yo no sé. Es un botón. Lemon. Good morning. Today we are going to start collecting some firewood for next winter. It's never too early to start. In fact, the earlier the better, so it's got lots of nice time to dry out. We're just popping literally over the barranco to our neighbour's place. She's been doing some land clearance lately, so there's lots of stuff to chop up and bring back. I have got to go back to the wheelbarrow, which I forgot. This last winter we spent no money at all on firewood which was pretty awesome and it was really just three or four days work spread throughout the year which is really nothing in the grand scheme of things. We find that there are always people looking to get rid of old wood and branches and in this case it was really handy because the wood was already chopped relatively small and piled conveniently so a lot of that work was already done for us. All we had to do was come along and chop it into smaller pieces to make it easier to carry and to take down to our car. This old um, car rod is great because it just breaks so easily, even the thick bits just snaps. Don't even barely need to use the chainsaw, really easy to process. It's a good workout coming up and down that hill with seven and a half kilos of baby on your back and a couple of kilos of firewood in front. Whew, it's warm. It's a lot of ants. Ants? Oh. Okay, I think we're done. That's not too bad for one morning's work. Full car load of wood for next year, so pretty good. Wow, we did 
emptied the whole car already. You yeah. emptied everything already. Now you're using your favorite thing in the world. Yep. <laughs> That is so satisfying. To yeah, our car is just yeah. in a shameful state. Yeah. So, um... In another life, you're like a car valet person. Mm -hmm. You would love that. You would have like all the tools, all the little like free yeah, attachments. It's actually that go, really good. That go in all the little crevices. It's actually really good YouTube channels of people that professionally clean cars, and they're super satisfying. Well, there's your there's your, you link to there's your new job. <laughs> I wish that was my channel. <laughs> you could make one with our car. You'd have a new video every week. Just bordering is a quince. I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of a prune while I'm at it. Okay, one, two, three, over there, more trees to do. This is a bucket of ash from the fire and urine. A great tree fertilizer, apparently. So now I'm going to be the stand for my camera. Okay, let me give you some advice. Don't leave these little labels on your trees thinking they'll just stick around on your tree and you'll be able to refer to them to see what your tree is because they do not stick around, they just come off. Look at all this rubbish I've got to get rid of. And you're left with a little tie and no label on your tree and no idea what it is. So we let some wild amaranth type weeds get really tall here last year around this tree because they were shading it actually and it was quite convenient but now they've got these super thick, almost like trunks and they're a bit of a pain to get rid of. I'm tired, but I've got to carry on because I've really got to make the most of these hours that I've got because I don't have any other time, so I'm going to keep going. One more tree to do. That is all the rocks gone from the first row of beds. It's got to get worse before it gets better, right? Amongst the various changes that we have planned in the garden um, is a new composting area. We get a lot of donkey manure as well as human manure, um, garden waste, chicken manure and all sorts of things and we currently have compost areas scattered all around the place. We initially did this because we thought it would be useful to have compost piles right near the places where we're going to be producing um, different kinds of waste to go into them. And this actually is the case with the compost piles near the house, which is super convenient and very close to where we come from the bathroom to empty the human ear bucket. Very close to the kitchen where we can tip kitchen waste. Um, so this position is great, but in most other cases, the location hasn't really been that useful. Um, and in a lot of instances, the piles are sited in places where it's hard to turn or hard to shade them. 
um, where we haven't got a nearby water source and are just not really that convenient. And as much as we really like having these compost bays right near the house for ease of access, they are really, really awkward to get to and hard to turn. There's just not a lot of space around here. Um, so we think we would really rather just have all of our bays in one place where we can fix these problems in one place, bring water, grow or build some shade over the top and have plenty of space to turn the piles. So we decided on a spot near the polytunnel at the back of the garden. Although these bays aren't necessarily going to be close to the source of the materials that are going to be going into them, they're going to be close to the garden where we're going to be using the compost at the end. So, I mean, you can't have it both ways. And we hope that we're optimizing for the right thing here. Um, so we'll see how this works out. I don't know if this is going to work with the sticks or not to use these poles to like support the sides and keep them in place but just the ground's too hard they're not going in I didn't want to use cement on this but I do want to do it properly since that's kind of my motto these days so I think I'm going to give up on this post basher Good morning, we are going to the building shop today to get some materials. This day was a bit of a rubbish day, I didn't really do anything. I think I moved like three pallets around in the end, which was rubbish. And I got stuck and I just wasn't sure what to do next. If I haven't got an actual specific project that's already underway, then it would be really hard to figure out what to do next. Um, so I just need to get the materials now so that I can start and continue with a project and then I know exactly what I'm doing in the little bits of time that I've got. So we're gonna get some materials. We're gonna stop in the village on the way, pick up some parcels from the farm, maybe have a little cup of coffee. And as much as anything else really, it's just something to do in the mornings. Go out, go on a little mission, get some stuff done because otherwise the mornings will be quite long. And yeah, I'm thinking always have a nap in the car, which is good. And it just gives you something to do. We have arrived. Okay, let's see how this goes. Look, say hello to Daddy. <laughs> Right, we definitely need a curtain rail, curtain pole, whatever you call this thing. Gonna need some of these. Maybe two packs of those. Let's get two packs of those. These. Some of these posts for the compost. Some of these. Are they all the same? Yeah. Okay, four of those. I think I've been very self-restrained. You right there? Sharing your car with some wood? <laughs> well that went quite a lot better than expected. Santi was pretty happy being carried around the shop. And one of the projects that I can now do, because I've bought a curtain rail, is make some curtains for our bedroom that's one of the things that arrived at the bar this morning amongst my packages i can't remember if it was this fabric or this fabric i think it was this one for the bedroom got curtains to make for a few places but uh yeah it's getting pretty light in the evenings in the morning now which is making sleep a little bit difficult so we're gonna get a curtain up base up and i can finish off the compost phase which is exciting all right i'm back home with all the materials, let's see if we can finish off these two compost bays that I want to build. Nice 
ground was fairly soft with the rain, it wasn't too hard to dig. So I'm using these like brackets for the posts because that means I don't have to sink the post too far into the ground and lose a lot of the height of the post, especially on the tall ones because I can't fit anything much longer in the car so we don't want to lose like half a metre in the ground. I also don't want to dig a half a metre hole so these things are like 5 euros and for me they're so worth it. Second hole going in. Yeah, I did make this hole a lot bigger on purpose because it's got to support one of the tall posts. Get some more. What do you think of our gravel pile? I wasn't going to show you this, I've actually been trying to keep it out of shot because it's just embarrassing. This is the bell tent that blew down and yes it's still here, we still haven't done anything with it. Post number two in. Thought I was gonna finish this today, but I don't think that is gonna happen. Ingenious. Okay, I think that will do for today. The first bucket of donkey manure is going in. Stoppy. That first bucket of donkey manure was purely symbolic. Actually, I was far from finished on this job. The next day, when the cement was a bit more set, I came back to screw the posts in place. My plan here is to have a mix of tall and short bays along this side of the edge of the garden. In our old allotment in the UK we had some two pallet high bays which were kind of closed in on all sides and we would just chuck stuff in the top and then there was like an access hatch at the bottom where you got the finished compost out if you can imagine what I mean. You didn't turn the pile at all because you couldn't access it and it was a slower system but it worked really well and it was really easy to use. So the bay next to this one will be a tall one, hence the taller posts. I didn't build this tall bay just yet because I wanted to leave the cement to set for a little bit longer before I started fixing pallets to these tall posts, but I did fix the three existing pallets together properly with brackets. The electric fence around the garden is coming down. I will be putting a proper fence around the garden at some point. Then I began moving the huge pile of donkey manure out of the garden which was the whole point of this project in the first place because I was just sick of seeing it there in the way, getting baked by the sun and just not doing anything useful. Some of this from the bottom is looking quite nice already. Oh hey! Do you want to see what I've been working on? Yeah. You haven't seen it at all, have you? Nope. I'll show you. It's 
Ja. So, gut. Ja? Ja, looks solid. <laughs> This is like a core part of the videos now. You come out from the house and yeah. compliment me on what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, so it's not going anywhere. Well, you say that, but it's moving quite a lot. Well, that's to stop it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not going anywhere, is it? It's moving, but it's not going anywhere. I don't know what you do when it gets this high, like I can't get a wheelbarrow in anymore. I think that's about as much as I can do with the wheelbarrow. Like, I see I can keep coming with buckets and like putting buckets on. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe like a temporary four four. Oh, you're gonna water? Mm, I'm gonna bring water here somehow. Water over there. Yeah, I've got some sort of shade thing, throw some trees along the back, some tall trees, get some sort of like cover that you can... make another bay here. Yeah, it's going to be a tall bay here, at least one tall bay, like so maybe two tall bays if they work out, and at least one more, if we get rid of all of that, at least one more short bay. Yeah, it's going to be compost all the way along, don't be compost. Awesome. Yeah, and there's going to be a separate human ear one. Good start. Yeah. Okay, I think we're going to leave it there for this video, there's still a lot more to do, but it's taken a while to get this far. You really can't do that much in two or three hours, which is what I have in the afternoons, but slowly we're getting there on these projects that are important to us. What I've been finding really helpful with this pace is just thinking of these afternoons as not necessarily time to work, but just me time. Time to do projects that I enjoy, time to get outside, time to get a bit of exercise. And in that sense, it doesn't really matter what we achieve because it is slow, but it's just time in the day that I get to do something that I enjoy and see a little bit of progress be made. And yeah, just do fun projects, which is what I enjoy doing. And yeah, thanks for watching this video, we will see you soon! A very good cover shot, let me see. Okay, come forward a bit. Okay, uh, back, right further away, further away, near the wheelbarrow. Uh, more that way, near the handles, like a bit more that way, a bit more. Come on then, come on! Sit. Stand over there. Yeah, stand over there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs>